the doors are closing. Train to party. Please hold on. Welcome to a new episode of Max 101. Today we're going to be talking about the Robertson Tunnel. TriMet has 94 stations that the Max will use, or 95 if they decide to reopen Kings Hill, but only one of those stations are underground, and it is located right in the Robertson Tunnel. This tunnel stretches from the area on the from an area on the Sunset Highway in Beaverton, and it ends in downtown Portland in the Goose Hollow neighborhood. The entrance to the tunnel on the Portland side is known as the East Portal because the portals are, well, the eastern edge of the tunnel. And the entry of the tunnel on the Sunset Highway side is known as the West Portal because, again, it's on the west side. And right in the middle of the tunnel is the Washington Park Station. It's actually a little bit closer, it's quite a bit closer to the Portland side than the Beaverton side but that is the one and only station that was built in this tunnel. This is the deepest train station in North America, third deepest train station in the world. And this is by far my favorite station. I go down here quite often. And the thing is, if it's hot summer day or whatever, if you go down to this station, it's always cool down here. And because of the trains passing through, it's usually pretty windy, especially when a train comes by. The station has four elevators. It has two on the west side and two on the east side. They've been working on the ones on the east side forever now. I don't know what's taken them so long. It, it may be done by the time this video's out. Um, but the two on the west side have also been remodeled. They've since changed them. And these elevators are quite unique. Where the display is that normally shows you, oh, you're on floor one or floor two or whatever, it doesn't do that. It starts and it tells you the amount of feet above sea level that you're at. All the elevators start at 450 feet. So that's how, that's how many feet you are above sea level. Now, the east elevators, when they end up at the top, they are at 693 feet above sea level. That's a 243 foot difference. The east elevators basically just take you to the zoo side. So it takes you right up by the zoo, and so when you exit the elevator, you can see the entry to the zoo right there. Now the west elevators at the station also begin at 450 feet, but these ones end up at 710 feet above sea level. That's a 260 foot difference. This will take you closer to the forestry side and all the other attractions that are around the Washington Park area. Now the reason there's so much of a difference between the west elevators and east elevators is because of the terrain. We are underneath Sylvan Hill and it's very hilly. The whole thing is very hilly. And so even just 200 feet away, the elevators are that far off from each other. So yeah, that's how crazy this land was that they built the zoo, Washington Park, the station. All of that was built under the hilly terrain that is Sylvan Hill. I will show you a video of what they look like and sound like, the before and after. Now, I wasn't, before all this, I wasn't really filming much for YouTube, so I might have been talking in some of the older clips. But, um, yeah, you can see in these clips what the, what the indicators look like on the elevator. Why not? Now because we're 260 feet below ground, there are no stairs, but in case of emergency there are emergency ladders that you can climb to get out of the station, but yeah, <laughs> there are no stairs. Now in the station itself, when you're in the tunnel part, 
There are no ticket machines on the platform, and there are no garbage cans on the platform. Both of those are on street level. So what you do, or what can be done, is you park in the parking lot there, which good luck finding a place to park in some times of the year. Um, you park up there, and there are ticket machines by the elevators on the street level. You purchase your ticket there, and then you take the elevators down to the station. They, do, they did not include ticket machines in the station itself. Now in the actual tunnel portion, there are intrusion alarms, so if anything other than a train is detected in the tunnel, then it will sound the alarm. So don't try and walk through the tunnel portion beyond the station, because A, you're risking your life because of how fast the trains travel through this tunnel, and B, the intrusion alarm is going to go off and security is going to get you. So don't do that. Or, and don't drive through the tunnel. People have seriously tried doing that before. Do not drive through the tunnel, people. <laughs> I, this has seriously happened. Now when you're actually traveling in the tunnel, you'll notice every once in a while there will be a blue light in the tunnel. It has normal lights to light up the tunnel, but every 750 feet there's a blue light in the tunnel. These serve a very important purpose. These tell you where emergency phones are located. So if something happens, if the power goes out or something, and the trains are unable to move, well, the blue lights will still be there, and it'll let you know where the emergency phones are. These are also where passage doors are. Remember that the way that this is built is it's two tunnels right next to each other. It's two tunnels that were bored out separately. So you have your westbound tunnel and your eastbound tunnel, and each one was bored out individually. Every 750 feet where these blue lights are, there's a passage door linking both tunnels. So that way, if, it, if something happens in one tunnel, you could go to the nearest passage door and just go into the other tunnel. Like, let's say there was serious water leakage or something and they had to evacuate the tunnel or something. Which, again, probably wouldn't happen, but it, it could, I guess, if it falls into disrepair. But these passage doors are there to get you into the other tunnel bore. Now the track layout here is not completely flat. Now anything west of Washington Park, so on the pretty much the Beaverton side, the tracks are pretty flat and they're almost entirely straight. And so trains here can easily hit 55 miles an hour, no problem. I'm going to be doing a video, it's going to be the next episode that's going to be covering speed limits. Um, now I'm going to have a video tomorrow that's going to be a bonus episode for this and it's just going to be the whole ride through the tunnel. It's going to be using my Max Redline video that I posted several weeks ago. Um, it's going to be using that video to show you kind of where, you know, how long the tunnel is because I recorded the whole thing. Now east of the Washington Park Station, so going to Portland, the tunnel is sloped toward Portland so it goes downhill. It's not really obvious when you're riding the train, but if you were driving the train it should be more obvious. The whole tunnel slopes downhill. Now when you leave Washington Park in both directions, you can still hit speeds of up to 55 miles an hour, but if you're going to Portland, you have to slow down part way through because the tunnel begins to curve as it's going downhill so that it's going to so that it can exit Portland. So you have to slow down gradually until you hit 20 miles an hour. And there's a speed magnet, which I talked about in my ATS magnets video. I, there's a speed trip magnet that's set for 20 miles an hour, and that's set on the east for trains going eastbound. I believe, and I'll have to say whether or not this is confirmed, I believe both the eastbound and westbound tunnels have speed magnets if you're traveling eastbound. So if you're traveling eastbound in the westbound bore, which is not very common, I believe it also has a speed trip magnet at 20 miles an hour. Um, anyway, and these magnets are there to prevent trains from entering Portland too fast because once it exits the tunnel, you're supposed to be going 20 miles an hour. So that's why you have to slow down so much. But going back the other way, well, there's nothing to slow down for. So you can enter the tunnel and quickly pick up some speed, but because it's uphill the whole way going in through the tunnel, it's a little bit harder to hit 55 miles an hour at first. Now for the history behind the tunnel boring, I'm going to be showing you a bunch of pictures that are not mine. So the tunnel itself was bored out using a machine called Bore Regard. Now this was the main boring machine that tunneled through both the west tunnel and the east tunnel. 
Now, this whole tunnel was supposed to have been done by 1997. The original plan for the Max Line out to Hillsboro was to open a portion of it up to Willow Creek. So from extending it from Gresham to Willow Creek only. And that was supposed to have opened by 1997. And then from Willow Creek on to the rest of the way to Hillsboro was supposed to open in 1998. But it turns out that the boring process took a lot longer than anticipated, especially for the westbound bore. The westbound bore took way longer than the eastbound bore. The, so what ended up happening is they opened it just as far as Kings Hill, which was before the tunnel. And that's where they were turning trains around. And that opened in 1997. And then they just opened it the rest of the way to Hillsboro in 1998. Now on the west portal, so the Sunset Highway side of the tunnel. They actually were using explosives at first for the, about the first mile into the tunnel. They were using explosives to get the tunnel to go through before they were using the boring machine like normal. Um, so that, was, that would have been interesting. There's not a ton of housing near there, but I don't think it would have mattered. You wouldn't have had to been very close for you to be able to, to hear it and feel it. So yeah, they did, they did do that for on the west portal only. So we've hit the end of this video, but tomorrow I'm going to have a video 20A and it's going to be a ride through the whole tunnel from the west portal to the east portal and we will be doing that in that video. It's only going to be traveling in the eastbound direction. Um, I don't really have that many videos of the whole journey of the westbound por por portal because, or westbound tunnel because usually on our way home, that's, that's on our way home, traveling west through the tunnel, and oftentimes we'll stop off at the station and go do stuff around at the station. Um, so I don't normally just travel through the whole thing and record it. So I, I don't know why, I don't really have that many videos westbound. So I'll just show you one eastbound through the tunnel next time, because it takes quite a while. You're underground for quite a while. Um, but for now, I am going to go, and I will see you tomorrow on the next episode.